All right, so I know it's been mentioned before, and it's on your schedules as well, but we're going to be having a bit of confession uh, time tonight, which is really awesome. But briefly, I wanted to talk to you about that. I have the opportunity to talk to you tonight before confession. Uh, I want to start out with a little story uh, about my high school days. The bowl cut had just left, thank God, in the seventh grade. Not kidding. I had a bowl cut till the seventh grade. Be grateful for your haircuts currently. Uh, okay, so when I was a sophomore in high school, I grew up all my life super competitive. My family was very, very competitive. I don't know if any of you are from competitive families where like nothing can just be a game, right? Everything is, yeah, you feel? Okay. Uh, so that's the family I grew up in. Like any just fun pickup basketball game, we'd end up like on the free throw line. My dad's like, do it better, do it better. I'm like, okay, dad. Uh, and so I just grew up competitive, always playing sports. And my sophomore year of high school, I was running up the basketball court and I stopped being able to breathe. Just like completely stopped being able to breathe. So my, uh, they had to pull me off the court, calm me down, get me breathing again. And from that moment on, for no reason at all, uh, I, I just stopped being able to breathe when I played sports. So I went from playing like 90-minute soccer games full on in midfield, running back and forth, to maybe being able to play two minutes in a basketball game before they had to pull me off. Uh, and so my parents were frantically kind of trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And my mom is like super into natural things. I don't know if you ever have to deal with that. But my mom's the best, but she's always like, it's a natural, it's a natural thing. And so she made me go to this uh, lady who was like testing all these like vitamins on me. She just like rub them on my skin. And then she's like, you're allergic. And I was like, to what? Okay, so <laughs> this is what they decided. Yeah, that's coming at you in a second. They, they tested me and the lady at the end says, listen, you're allergic to dairy, wheat, and sugar. And I was like, huh, good, everything good in life. My mom, my mom and I are in the car after, and she's like, you know, you're going to have to give these up. And I said, I'd rather die young. And then my mom starts yelling at me for not caring about myself. I was like, I don't care. Um, but so I did this. I went off it for a little bit. Didn't help. So I went off of it again, went to college. And then my junior year, this is a picture from my junior year. Uh, I really stopped being able to breathe. And so my mom took me back uh, to the doctor to be allergy tested. Anyone ever been allergy tested before? Yeah, one of the most miserable experiences of your life, for sure. Okay, this is me before I got 63 shots in my arms. Yeah, 63, there you go. So this is what happens is they, they make you like take, uh, like show your arms and then they, they like stamp a bunch of needles into you. Yeah, okay. They stamp a bunch of needles into you and then however much your body swells is how like allergic you are to it. So basically they just want to see how big your body swells. My mom is taking these pictures. I want to read you some of the, she is live tweeting this to my friends while it's happening. Um, so she's taking this picture, and I find out later because my friends start sending it to me, she's sending out these hashtags. Hashtag the human pincushion, hashtag allergy nation, hashtag connect the dots, hashtag where's the Benadryl, hashtag dust mites. I find this out later, my friends are like, dude, your mom kept us updated the entire time. I was like, what's going on? Um, but basically they allergy tested me, the doctor comes in later, picks up uh, the paper that says all the things I'm allergic to, and he just busts out laughing. And he's like, you're allergic to everything. And I was like, why is that funny to you? And he's like, I've never seen this in my life. And so he like brings in the nurses, and he's like, look at, she's literally allergic to everything on the list. Like, look at how much her body is swelling. And I was like, what a strange experience right now. And then she's like, I'm sending you immediately to the specialist. I'm like, okay. So I go next door to the specialist. Specialist walks in, picks up my charts. So like, no seen this you're literally allergic to everything brings in his nurses he's like look at her she's so swollen it's like this is miserable uh, so this is what he said he said um, basically listen there's nothing we can do to help you you're allergic to everything you're literally allergic to the air that you breathe right so he said you you're just every time you breathe you're like allergic to it <laughs> He's like, good, so what do we do? He's like, nothing, we can't. You're too allergic, right? <laughs> no joke, this is what he said. And then he says this, this is fascinating. I'm like, this is going to be good, because apparently this all is fascinating. You are sick every single day, but you've been sick for so long, you don't even notice it anymore. I was like, what? He goes, if any one person felt like you did on any given day, they think they were, su they were super sick. But you are just like sick every single day when your body has just adjusted to it. I'm like, so what? Nothing, you're stuck with it. He's like, okay, great. And so here I am. So uh, I was pondering 
this? How can you not ponder this? I'm just sick every day, but I don't notice it. Uh, and I was, I was chatting with some of my friends uh, who were telling me about my mom's live stream tweet of the event. Uh, and I started to think about this more and more, uh, just this idea of the fact that I'm like sick and I don't notice that I'm sick. And like what a weird reality that is uh, for me to be sick and not notice that I'm sick. And it kind of like led to deeper thought uh, into this reality of how often, how often am I sick in other areas of my life and I just don't notice it? Uh, how often am I sick in my spiritual life, which I know kind of sounds cheesy, but like I don't even notice it. And I think you and I live in a culture today where we're really good at faking all the time that we're okay all the time, because to not be okay is to be weak. And so we're really good and we live in this culture where like it's super simple to just like what you're pushing out to everyone all the time is like, I'm doing this and it's really fun and I'm doing this and everyone's seeing like your Instagram and your Snapchat and they're like, oh my gosh, she's living the dream and then you're just like super lonely, but as long as everyone else doesn't see it, like you're fine, right? This is the culture we live in, this is the culture I live in as well, right? We can't not be fine. And we'd be really ashamed if anyone found out that we weren't like perfectly okay. I know this graduating college and I was like scrolling through Instagram, one of my friends is like doing all these crazy things. So I call her one day and I'm like, man, you were, you're just doing everything right. What are you doing? She's like, I'm so miserable. I'm so lonely. And I'm like, no, because you post the best Instagram pictures literally every day. And she's like, no, I'm literally, I'm alone every day. And like I maybe sometimes go out and like that's what you catch a glimpse of. And so you and I, we live in this culture where we're like, don't even realize anymore or don't want to admit that we're broken because we're just so used to constantly being okay. And the more we like fake that we're okay or pretend like we're not broken, we're just pretending, we're just pretending that starts to become our reality. And we stop really looking at the fact that we're actually broken. Right? That we like make mistakes and that's okay because you're human like I'm a religion teacher I go to church on Sunday I'm pretty nice to people most of the time and yet I'm, I'm broken like I'm, I'm sick sometimes but here's the good news here's what I want to bring you back to today as we start to get to go to confession um, is that is we're broken and we can't pretend like we're not because we are, right? We're, we're human. We sin. The moment you came into the world, uh, you were born into brokenness, unfortunately. But you are. You're born into brokenness. And yet we spend our entire lives trying to hide the, this very fact, right, that, you, that you're broken. But I want to bring you to uh, the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 2, verse 17. And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus just gave you permission to stop faking like you're okay all the time. Because he's not coming for the fake righteous. He's not coming for those who are like fake okay, or those who are pretending that they're okay, right? Because I think if we took a look at ourselves for one minute, everything else aside, if we took a really deep, hard look at ourselves, uh, we know that we make mistakes. We know that we're broken. We know that uh, things, our best intentions, sometimes we still choose to do the wrong thing. And yet, why do we spend so much energy, myself included, why do I spend so much energy into making everyone think that I'm like perfectly okay? When Jesus came, not for those who have it all together, but for those who are sick, for those whose lives are sometimes just like a mess, right? So we're going to be entering a time of confession tonight. You all have the opportunity to go to confession. And here's the beauty of confession, because I think for a lot of us, if we take that moment to look at that part of our lives where we realize that we are broken and maybe we've been like pushing it aside, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, or I know I am, or maybe you're caught in that thing where all you can see is your brokenness. I want to bring you to this reality before you step into the confessional today that your brokenness uh, is not bigger than what was done on the cross. Like your brokenness isn't too big for God to handle. Like when you finally encounter that and, you, and you're fine and you're willing to say, uh, I need help, right? I need, I need the doctor, I need the physician. When you're finally ready to say that, 
your brokenness isn't too big for God, right? He's the ma- impossible is what he does best. Impossible is what God does best. Uh, to enter into our mess, to enter into our reality. Um, my homegirl, St. Mary of Egypt, she became a prostitute by her own doing at age 12. Age 12, ran away from home. And for 17 years, spent her life doing that. And then when she was 29 years old, stood on the steps of a church and begged for mercy and became a saint. St. Augustine spent his life total party boy. You can think about it. He did it. Moment of conversion came back to the Lord. So you can't tell me that your brokenness is too big for God. That when we take a moment to actually look at ourselves Uh, and see that we might just need help, that everything might just not be as okay as we make ourselves seem, that's not going to be too big uh, for God to handle. And praise God, right, that he's going to invite us. He's inviting you tonight. He's inviting you uh, at Mass to come and just be with him, right? He's, He's waiting. He knows your brokenness, but he also knows your glory. He made you. Right, so while you might see brokenness when you step into the confessional today, he sees victory. Yeah? Then this is the beauty, this is the mystery of love. That we would take our brokenness and God would make it his glory. And when we take a hard look at ourselves and we bring ourselves before God, he makes us everything that we want to be and everything that he created us uh, to be. And our world is so against this, right? Can we get the picture of the crucifix back up for me? Our world is so against this, right? Like images like this that we would look at and the world is just like, oh, I don't want to see it. It hurts. Right? Like, ah, cover, oh, like I don't want to look. Pain would like cover it up. That's what our culture does best. Like make it look nicer. Make it a prettier picture of Jesus. Make his hands, like, less in pain and his body less thin. Like, clean it up a little bit. And this is the beauty of the church that says, look how beautiful. Like, look how beautiful it is sometimes to be in pain, to encounter suffering and come to the Lord. And that's your opportunity tonight at Confession that you would get to take a little bit of time out of your crazy, busy schedules to look at yourself. No one else is looking at you, right? We're all looking at ourselves. We're looking at the messes and the brokenness. And then we're taking it to the one uh, who makes glory out of messes, who makes beauty out of the dust. And this is your opportunity tonight. And maybe you haven't gone to confession since your very first confession when you were seven years old. Maybe you went last week, you want to go again, uh, wherever you are on that. Tonight's your night. This is your opportunity to take your brokenness and lay it before God because I promise he has beautiful intentions behind your brokenness. He's going to take it and he's going to make beautiful things out of it. Whether you see that tonight whether you see that next week, whether you see that in 10 years when you're an adult and you're off uh, doing big things, God just doesn't ignore what you bring to him. Right? He's the master of the impossible. He's the master of the impossible. So I'm going to invite um, them to start handing out the examination of conscience for us. If they would, you guys are going to get an examination of conscience. If you've never gotten one of these before, this is just to help you kind of reflect on uh, what's going on in your life. I don't know about uh, you, but sometimes before I go to confession, I get super nervous and like my mind turns into mush and I'm like, I don't even know what I've done wrong, uh, but I've done things wrong. And then uh, you get to the confessional and you forget. We understand. Uh, it can be nerve nerve wracking to bring your sins in front of someone else. So we're giving you these examination conscience to help you think. You can write on them, you can draw on them, you can circle them if you know you need help remembering things, but uh, this is for you. This is for you. Our awesome priests, some more have shown up. They're here to hear your confessions, taking the place of Christ tonight, right? Christ in them, taking your brokenness and making it new. So 
Take some time to reflect. I don't want you to all hop up at once, but when you're ready, um, the confession line is going to be over there. Hang on for a second. The confession line is going to be over there. When you come back from confession, you're going through these doors. And if you have to use the bathroom, you're going through those doors. All right, so the confession line is going to be over there. Um, no need to, like, run and get in line. I promise you'll have time. And if not, there's, like, 20 priests here all weekend, so you can stop by for confession anytime. Uh, take some time to reflect. Take some time to be with the Lord. What is he asking of your brokenness? Uh, because he plans to do incredible things uh, with even, even our mistakes. This time's for you. Take it. The Lord's in mad pursuit after you. He's a madman for your heart. And he's been waiting. He's been waiting for you to step into that confessional.